is Acro James. Times run me to the circus. And these are the top five partner stretches that you guys can try out. And here we go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Like, 
the joy of acro alive you know what i mean the, the reason why i'd say almost like 99 percent of us are into this is to have fun connect with Absolutely. your friends you know what i mean yeah. so if you show up and you both are in an awful fucking or awful beeping mood uh you're doing it to have fun you're connecting with your partner still you're, you're gonna find that the best days are coming from when you're actually enjoying each other's company and enjoying each other's training process and everything. Next question is by... Lisette, Lisette underscore, underscore LF underscore. Uh, okay, okay. How did you first find flyers to do acro with? So, we're gonna change this from first finding flyers to first finding an acro partner. A lot of people, when they're first getting into the acro community, they always wanna make like the perfect connection or the perfect first move. And I think what's most important than anything is that you invest into yourself first so that you have more to give to any type of partnership. Good way to find a community, by the way, and this is the number one way that I find people all around the world as I'm traveling, is that no matter what city you live in, you're going to just type in that city's name and then acro at the end. So for example, if I want to find acro people in Los Angeles, I type in LA acro or Miami acro. That will normally bring you up with a community page. If you can't find it for that city, Search for the biggest city near you, and that will be a good way that you can connect with the community. Go to a community, introduce yourself, be friendly, be patient. The most important thing that you can do is just have a good vibe about you and show that you're there to have fun. Once you're in the community and you're, you're starting to look for a more dedicated partner, again, the more that you can invest into yourself, the more you're gonna be able to bring to your partnership. So that means you're doing your handstands on your own, you're lifting weights on your own, you're working on all of your movement. You're kind of like really building yourself up so you have more to give to your partnership, and I think that's what's gonna be most important. Cool. Great Good. answer. Like that. Back to the next stretches. Cool. They're really bending. They take their feet off the ground. You freaking nature. 
<laughs> but here, she's gonna set her feet back down. I'm going to help her come all the way down. So she starts to bring her body towards the floor. I'm holding her weight, setting her down nice and gently. Now that we showed what it's like when you stretch a smaller yet bendier person than the bigger, more unflexible person, I need to make sure that I put myself in a position that I can do as much work as possible. If I put my hands on the back of my flyer's legs like this, I have no ability to push anymore because my hands will just go flying off of her. I need to make sure that I, my fingers are on opposite sides, and then from here, as she goes down to pick me up, she grabs around my shoulders. Now I can push into this position to help really help get myself up here. I'm trying to lock my arms as much as I can. I'm breathing. I'm allowing at least the whole, pretty much all of my weight right now. If you're doing this with someone that's bigger than you, you want to make sure that your chest is open, your shoulders are back, and that you have great posture during this all. That will make sure that she keeps her back safe and really allow her to put herself in a position that's easy to work. If she lets me down slowly. So for our third question in, our question and answer. This is from Basing Boy. How do you get out of a plateau when you struggle at a move and nothing seems to help? Uh, when, you're, when you're trying out a skill set, it's, it feels like nothing is going right for this specific skill. I think it's important to move on and just focus on things that might have a lot of the same elements. Say you're working on an in-locate to handstand. If the in-locate is not hitting and you're not making progress, instead of just kind of defeating yourself and going through these like horrible training sessions where you start getting kind of tense with your partner, tense with yourself, it's better just to move on and go to something that might be a little bit similar. Clean up your jump in, maybe learn a different entrance like a cartwheel into hand to hand. Allow yourself to understand that sometimes there can even be a skill that you could be really good at one day and then the next day you're completely crap at it and that happens to so many people. It's important just to kind of be flexible in your training plan, be flexible in your goals and the time that it takes to accomplish them and allow yourself to just uh, move in a different direction because these skills will help this skill in the long run. Learning a well-rounded foundation is the quickest way to kind of like build a well-rounded practice. Do you have any tips or drills to make your body strong to facing hand-to-hand? -hand? This Who's question that? is by Graphic XZ. All right, that's pretty good, yeah. When we're thinking about strength for hand-to-hand -hand and everything, especially when it comes down to basing, that your position is going to either make you strong or weak. When you see people, especially when they're first starting to learn base, like first learning how to base hand-to-hand, -hand, they're told to hold the flyer's hands very narrow. And what happens is that the base closes their chest, they bring their elbows in, everyone's told that like, turn your hands forward. Unless if you have like dislocating hypermobile wrists that you can just like, crank them forward, that's not going to work. And if anything, it's not going to put you in a strong position that you can you can work from. The biggest thing is, is that when you're working on your position at the beginning for hand-to-hand -hand is instead of trying to bring your hands close together, closing off your chest, think about pulling your shoulder blades a little bit back together. Just by going from here and bringing my shoulder blades into a position, my hands are already facing forward without doing anything weird to my wrists. So from a side view, I'm not going like this, turning my hands forward because you can kind of see that my shoulder blades are protracted. I'm a little hunched in my back. There's no way to feel strong in this position. So what I want to make sure that I do is I open my chest. Now from here, I'm in a strong position to push overhead. I'm in a strong position to hold one arm. I'm in a, a better position to be strong from. You want to work on the position that you're working from rather than just trying to build strength because a really strong person can feel weak in a basic position if their position isn't right. We hope you enjoyed the five partner stretches. Make sure you try them out with your friend, your quarantine buddy. I'll leave a link below to our Instagram so you're able to leave a, leave a comment, ask a question, send a video. We'll do anything to help you out reach your acro goals. Everything today that you've seen us wear is brought to you by Elise. She puts all these outfits together. She has quite the collection. Uh, everything's for sale. Tell us about it. Yes, check me out on the link below. I have my Instagram attached. Um, after this whole thing is all over too, I would love to style the shit out of all of you. You can come over, get dressed up, have fun, and also get upside down. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, send a like, anything. We'll see you soon.